Here's one from uh, Fiona Stewart. She's uh, asking, um, is the student placement scheme and the, and the uh, incubator scheme open to every single um, student on, uh, uh, within the training courses? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, the schemes are uh, designed to be uh, all inclusive based on uh, people's abilities, basically. So we've got a, you know, a, a minimum standard that we're kind of looking for. That's both academically. So we're looking at uh, students that have um, uh, successfully completed uh, TMA 15 on the design course or TMA 21 on art and animation or developer. So at that point, we think they've completed sufficient amounts of the technical stuff to be able to come in and actually really do something. Uh, we then have to look at uh, portfolio pieces and, and what's going on in, with the portfolio work. But students that are making uh, the standard, you know, uh, it's, it's really just about that. It's about getting to those points on the course where we can actually see, uh, the, you know, the first inkling of, of, of that student's uh, abilities. Um, but it, it, in essence, you know, there's no other artificial limit. It's just a question of students achieving that standard. So um, our graduates and our, our students are, are very keen to, um, uh, to look for work placements. Yeah. Who do they talk to? Who do they contact? Um, it's, it's the basic construct at the moment is that you can access uh, a large amount of the information through either the forum or through Student World. Mm -hmm. um, we've already uh, deposited a lot of, of information into uh, the forums. Uh, there are particular tracks on, on the forum for uh, both incubators and placements and there's been a lot of conversation in there already. So there's already like a bulk of information. Um, so uh, you, you can do that if you uh, want to speak uh, more privately or, or in more detail, uh, emailing me at, at DR Studios uh, is not a problem. And really right down to if somebody would much rather prefer to have a one-to-one -one conversation on the phone, uh, calling DR Studios and we'll set a time up for a, for a conversation, that's, that's not an issue. Uh, a question that's been asked by quite a few people actually, um, how many and which studios uh, have requested to be a part of the uh, incubator and placement programme? Uh, with, to do, with to do with student placements, um, we're still uh, a short distance away from actually being able to uh, release all the names. So we had a really, really good response when the uh, press release went out. You know, we had 30 plus studios mm -hmm. get in touch, which was, you know, it's, it, it made for a very kind of positive start. Uh, most of them obviously just looking for the basic information. When will students be available? Mm -hmm. How do we, you know, find out the student that we want and, you know, all the usual stuff. Um, it's likely that it's going to, uh, while the negotiations are ongoing and we're putting all the legal stuff in place, it's probably going to run to the start of January before we can actually uh, start to really kind of nominate studios. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's, we, we have to build some safeguards in there for the studios. You know, once, once it, becomes, it becomes known that they're in a position to take placements, uh, then it becomes a management issue of people applying and stuff. So, you know, we, we've got to work to their criteria. We can't ask them to work to ours. So it'll be, I think, probably the start of January before we can actually really name anybody. Um, and so is it fair to say that um, the beginning of January uh, is where um, TCG are targeting the first of the incubator schemes to be, to be launched? Uh, actually, no. We've already placed uh, the information out there to do with the internal DR Studios mm -hmm. uh, placement. So we are currently uh, looking to fill a uh, three-month uh, designer position working with uh, Mete who's the lead designer at uh, DR Studios. Uh, that information has gone out to Student World and to the, uh, to the forums again. Mm -hmm. But if anybody wants that information, if they've not seen it, if they ring or email, I'll, I'll send it to them deliberately. So we're hoping that they, uh, the, the candidate for the internal position at DR Studios that we've identified, but that's a three month rolling position. So we'll, we'll make that uh, seat available to four students during a year, taking three months, three months each. Um, so that's already in there, but the first, uh, if you like, external one, yeah, it, it'll be the start of January where we name the studio, name the students, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, we've got a, uh, another question coming in via Skype. Um, in terms of the, uh, the, the, the incubators that are being placed or embedded into studios, uh, questions are being asked, um, is, is there an issue uh, working side by side with a competitor? Because effectively an incubator scheme or yeah. an incubator team at some point we'll be competing with the studio that's, um, th that's taken them in. Do we feel that's an issue? John, do you want to take well, that? Well, I, I would say that um, if you were being signed for a football team and you saw yourself being in competition with someone who's effectively on the same side as you, there'd be a massive problem. I think mm. the big issue here is you're part of a team. Mm. And so your competitors are everybody else, and there's plenty of them. 
and there's plenty of hurdles, there's plenty of people we work with and we kind of work against. And in fact, in the games industry in general, not just to be not perceived competitors in the same office as us, but all the other studios that we know, for instance, for me, these guys around me, you know, if I'm not succeeding, I want my friends to succeed, it's how it works. You don't really have that sense of competition in the sense that it's being discussed yeah. there at all. I think it's, a, it's about cooperation. Cooperation within your company, within your peers, within your country, because as a country we have to lift what we're doing in Britain, within Europe, because that's also got to be lifted against the States and Japan. You know, there's a whole series of cooperations that go on, so I don't like the concept of competition. If you're part of a team to do something more and compete, Compete against the market. Would be my I, I mean, I, I totally agree there. And the other thing is the way that the incubators are being set up, and Dave can go into more detail on this. But within any of the studios they're being placed, is it's very much a uh, cooperation, uh, uh, mentoring uh, system where there's a uh, a value to the studio for the incubators to do well, and vice versa. There's a value for the incubators to do well for the studio. So it really is a win-win a, 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 a situation there, rather than competitive. I think um, it's about, well, I think firstly, our industry is totally unique for collaboration. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the, the mainstream IT industry, and you say to them, actually, we have, we have three or four conferences every year where the whole industry gets together and, and basically, you know, puts the crown jewels on the table for everybody else to see, they just think you're crazy. They think that you, you know, there's some kind of industrial secret that we're all you know, trying to guard. It isn't like that. So gaming has always been highly collaborative. It's always been, because uh, we all grew up, we've all known each other since we were kind of young people, um, you know, looking at, uh, going back right back to the beginning where you've got Darren and Jason Falkus, the Jobling brothers that run Utechnics, um, you know, uh, Andrew and Philip Oliver that run Blitz. But, you know, we've got, it, it's, it's been a community really from kind of really from day one and it still is like that. And, but the other thing is it's about capacity building. If John needs more capacity and we can place an incubator with him, we get the benefit of John's experience and guidance to make sure that that team is getting off to the best possible start and John gets the extra capacity. Mm. Now there might come a time when he doesn't need that capacity and we decide that the incubator should be cut free or it should float or or it should operate under its own on its own uh, kind of uh, momentum. But at that point, it's had the best possible start. Mm -hmm. John's input, we've supported it, we've used industry contacts to get it off the floor. It's got a far better chance at that point. And to be honest, we've always had breakaways. I mean, everyone yeah. been involved in a big studio. I mean, at Sensible, we weren't a large team. We, the maximum size we were was 23 people. We still had three break breakaway studios. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're, we're very well used to it. There's a history yeah, and, of it. And you support industry. those teams, yeah. yeah, Absolutely. You know, these become your friends. You're working yeah. with them every day, you know. Yeah. And, and there is a time, I've got to say, as someone who believes in people having creative freedom eventually, when people really have that desire to cut loose and be free, you've got to let yeah. them go as yeah. well. Yeah. However, it's a mistake to think now you can go straight in with no experience <laughs> and make it instantly because it's not going to happen. You know, you should take the <coughs> guidance from all of the people like us who, who have now got 20 plus years experience under our belt. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, just uh, uh, moving on to another question from Patyad via, um, via Skype. Um, Patyad's in full-time um, uh, employment. Um, how flexible can the incubator scheme be for people who are in full-time employment, or is perhaps the student placement program a better yeah. option for them? It's, it's a tough one, right? So we know that um, there are a lot of the Trends Game students that do work full-time already. Yeah. Some of them are, actually have reasonably well-paid jobs, and you know, it, it's, it's difficult for them to maybe imagine how they might detach themselves from that and go do something else. Um, the real outcome of being on a placement, obviously, is that you get to say that I've worked on something, it's on your CV. So, you know, I went to Studio X and worked on Product Y. And when other people look at the CV, that's really what they're looking for. It's that connection to something that's been shipped. Mm -hmm. So um, what, we, what we need to do is the, stu the, play the, student, the students that can clearly see they can go onto the placement scheme, you know, it's not a problem. They just come through the processes we've described. For the guys that are working, I'm happy to have a dialogue with them. If they can f describe to me in some sense what the set of circumstances is that allows them to do the placement, then I, I can always go away and look at that and see if it, there's a studio that'll match that particular set of requirements. It's likely though that we get a, a, a selection of students that somewhere along the line, we, we can't figure something out, something specifically. But uh, right now, we will be probably saying something about this in shortly. Uh, Tony and I are working on something in the background that would give those students some involvement on a live project without actually having to commit to a long-term uh, placement. 
So, so, so there really are there, there are opportunities for those yeah. currently in employment, but clearly they are somewhat limited um, by comparison to those who are able to roll straight into an incubator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, another question from Kay um, Selian. Um, uh, the cost, or the or the the um, the, the, the payments, um, students on work placements, are they going to get paid? And if so, how much? And the same for incubator scheme as well. Yeah, um, I mean, thankfully, the the the, the situation uh, for mainstream development studios and student placements has developed uh, brilliantly. So students can now actually expect to be paid for a placement, whereas a few years ago that really wasn't the case. Uh, and and there are good some good. You know, studios in the UK like blazing a trail with that. I'd, I'd have to point out the point of Blitz, who have taken a very mm -hmm. kind of positive stance at making sure that a student's input is valued, like financially valued. So, uh, Train to Game took the decision that we would fund placements to fall in line with that, yeah. and and it's uh, I think it's a reasonable uh, adjustment that we've got. So, students that have to travel will cover travel expenses. Students that have to relocate will cover you know uh, you know a reasonable amount for. Um, accommodation costs and travelling costs. Mm -hmm. um, the discussion with the studios is about making a contribution. We're going to make a financial contribution. Uh, they're going to make a fi financial contribution to provide the studio, uh, to, provide, to provide the student with uh, a personal allowance. Um, if I have to take a, a, a kind of temperature test at the moment, I think it's probably somewhere between four and five hundred pounds a month that's likely to become available to the student. But that's going to vary. It'll get some loading for location and, and, and that kind and of thing. And that's on the student placement programme. Yeah. So it, it's fair to say then that um, uh, the term salary is probably an overstatement. It, it's much more about it's more subsistence. It's, it's like a bursary. Paying for paying yeah. for paying for, um, uh, for paying for food, paying yeah. for transport, that sort of thing. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the way that I would describe it, it's less about paying the student for work placement. It's more about removing all the, their the external cost, worries and their costs. Making it zero cost. Yeah. It, yeah. So, and I think Gary.